This video is sponsored by Fictive, your partner for custom manufactured parts done right. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a quick tip tonight. We're going to talk about base mode. Where is it in Orca? How you turn it on? And what are some of your options for sort of tweaking and tuning some of your layer height options in there? We'll talk about how to do some just like standard vasey type shapes, right? So cylinders and then non sort of traditional vasey type shapes like busts or figures, things like that, and how you might apply some of the same principles to some of those as well. So let's just jump into it. Like where you turn this on, this came from a question um, uh, in one of the previous videos. Um, this was from, M, uh, the username is MCSSM. So thanks for the comment on this. But this came from, from his question in one of the previous videos. So here we go. Here's where you turn on. You're going to go over here to others. Right, and we're going to ensure that basically in the uh, special mode here that you've got spiral vase turned on. There are, are a couple of um, prerequisite items you need to make sure are happening. And if you don't already have them turned on, um, Orca will turn them on for you, or at least give you the, the option. But you've got to have one wall loop selected. So one wall selected. You need to make sure supports are disabled. Um, you've got zero top shells. You've got zero infill. And if you're using time lapse, it needs to be set to traditional. Those are sort of the five conditions that it wants you to have. Now, again, you don't have to memorize these. If for some reason you don't already have any of those turned on and you tick that box, you'll get a little error message that pops up. And <clears throat> in fact, here, why don't I show you? If I go back to my standard and I go ahead and tick spiral vase, this is the little error message that pops up and we can just hit yes, go ahead and preset those. Now I've gone ahead and said and done a save as here and basically made made a vase profile here for my process. So that makes it easier for me to do this next time. And I've got it selected here, Ender 3 vase mode, tick, bang, um, discard, all that stuff. So let's tick that box. So there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a primitive. I'm going to add a cylinder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale this, this, um, this dude up here a little bit. And if we do nothing else other than take those settings, taking your standard uh, layer heights, defaults, all that good stuff, and we slice this plate, uh, you'll see it has gone ahead and applied all the stuff that we have. So you can see that there is no top, which you don't want in base mode. Obviously, you've got one wall here. So depending on your nozzle size, that is really the, to me, nozzle size in base mode is always like the primary consideration of what you want to do. So if you want to make something watertight and you're printing a, with a 0.4 nozzle or even smaller in vase mode, I would, I would not run away with the expectation that you're going to be drinking out of this thing or putting flowers in it and have water hold up. Some people have gotten lucky on it. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying, I'm saying keep your expectations <laughs> low. Um, you know, so if you really want to get into like doing vase mode stuff and trying to get into things where it's watertight and stuff like that, obviously depending on the type of material you're using, but you want to use a thicker nozzle. You want to use a 0.8, you want to use a point, you know, or you want to use a one millimeter nozzle, something a bit thicker so that as the plastic, you know, as you're extruding filament, those layers are properly adhering to each other and not leaving potential gaps for water to leak through. Um, and if you really want something watertight, you really kind of be, need to be printing with more walls, but they look cool nonetheless. So that's what you can do just from a basic setting perspective, right? In vase mode, that's where you turn it on. That's how you take care of it. Now we can go into some of like the non-traditional vasey shapes and how you can apply some of the principles in vase mode to those. Um, before we do that, let's have a quick word from, uh, from our sponsor. Do you have parts you need to make that are outside of your current capabilities? Or are you finally ready to level up that part that you've been making in your garage and you need a fast and reliable manufacturing partner? Then you need to consider using Fictive. Fictive has a super easy process to upload and quote your parts, whether you need CNC machining, 3D printing, urethane casting, even injection molding. When you use Fictive, you get access to a global partner network, super fast cycle times, guided expertise all along your journey, and consistent quality. You can even track the status of your production, including photos of your parts, inspection data, all directly through the Fictive platform. Use the link and the code below in the description for a discount off your first order, and it helps out the channel if you do so. Okay, so non-traditional stuff. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and pop out of here. Let's go ahead and delete this shape. Let's bring in this Moai. So we've got this little Moai head. We're going to go ahead and turn him up on his, actually stand him up. I'm going to scale him, make him something a little bigger. So, you know, the, the expectation here is now I'm going to 
a print some kind of pencil holder or paintbrush holder or tool holder or something, right? Um, and and since we know that essentially it, we're clearly seeing the top of it, it's top of the head here, but that's not going to print in base mode. That some some portion of this is going to get lopped off. So if we go ahead and just slice the plate from here and we do some quick analysis in the preview, you can definitely see seams are turned on and they should be white. Definitely no seams here, right? You can see a bit of a step rolling up the shoulder where there is a layer change happening because even though it's it's spiraling up, there is still a layer change that happens, right? The nozzle has to move up. Um, so there, the, you know, you have the potential from a dial, you know, a dialed in printer perspective for there to be a little bit of a visible seam, but it's really, it's really not as pronounced as in a traditional print. Um, so, uh, again, you've got a gap here in the head. That's not going to print well across the ears. You can see some gaps here cause that's pretty tight here in the nose. You've got some stuff going on and then down here in the bottom lip. So again, this is not going to be watertight. This is going to be a decorative thing, but here is a couple things that you can do, um, to actually make this kind of a nice print. So if we pop back out here to, pre to preview, the first thing I would do is actually cut the head right off of this. Um, so I'm gonna hit that cut line up here at the top. We go face on here. Now we've got a plane that we can play with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up. And I'm gonna say, I wanna keep the lower part, lower part keep checkbox, right? Perform cut. Now you can see he's got a flat top. And if we go ahead and slice this plate one more time, you can see now we have a better defined opening here at the top to put some stuff in. We still have these other gaps here. So this is where you can actually get into your adaptive layer heights and really sort of leverage the power of the software to sort of be smart about where it's going to apply some, some different layering. So if we pop back out here to prepare and we go over here to your printer settings up here at the top, right in the edit, the, the edit preset button next to this here, we'll click on that. <clears throat> if we go here to your extruder, under the layer height limits, this is where you need to do a little bit of research on the nozzle diameter that you're going to be using. So I use a 0.6 nozzle. Um, I am pretty comfortable with my minimum layer height being a one point, you know, a 0.1216. On the top end, a 0.32 is completely fine. But I know that that's where I, you know, the, that's the, the the range I'm comfortable with uh, with my printer, and my printers, and my nozzle. So once you've got those set, again, this might be a bit different if you're running a 0.4. There's some defaults in there that go all the way down to like a 0.08, um, a 0.08, or sorry, um, the 0.08. Yeah. Anyway, there's some defaults in there that you can play with, but I think you probably know where, where your finest detail setting could be for the nozzle you're printing with. And that's what you want to put in for the minimum and what you know is for the maximum for your particular nozzle. So do some research and some testing and, and throw those numbers in. From there, you can click, uh, you can just save it and pop on back out. Now, that is not the only thing you need to do. You actually need to come over here to this adapt, this variable layer height uh, setting. So if we click on this, we'll now get a couple of uh, boxes up here. So if we want to click on adaptive, now you can see in the green banded areas where it's going to be applying some of those adaptive layer heights. So it's particularly in this nose area and the lip, those green areas is where it's going to tighten up those layers and try and print it at higher detail. Um, to, to help some things out. So we're going to get this plate. Let's check the result. Now we can see here, those gaps in here in the nose are pretty much gone from a print perspective. They're still down here in that bottom lip because that thing's pretty flat. So, uh, it's not going to get rid of that. Uh, it's tightened it up a bit and up here in the, in the ears it has gone ahead and taken care of those as well. So that's one nice tricky setting where adaptive layer heights can help you out. You know, where, where I don't learn, it really depends on the, um, the, the type and the quality of the filament that you're using, because you can see these darker bands, right? Where it's going to tighten up those layers down to a finer uh, layer height. So depending on what you're doing, if you're going to do any post-processing, probably not a big deal. If you're going to print this off and just leave it bare filament and not do anything with it, depending on the filament you're using, you're probably going to see some of these tighter bands and slightly, slightly more or slightly discolored bands running across your print. So a couple of considerations you just need to make um, for it. So, you know, again, uh, I think overall it's going to turn out to be a nicer print because you don't have all these gaps rolling up the nose and the ears and things like that. So a um, couple of considerations for you to make and do. Um, and again, uh, so there's there's no seam, all that good stuff. So I hope this helps. Um, I hope you get some value out of this. Go play with it. It'd be great to see, you know, printing vasey shapes and non-vasey type shapes and see how it pops out for you. 
Um, so thank you very much. Again, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to visit our sponsor, Fictive. If you click the link in the description below and use the, uh, the code at checkout, you'll get 10% off your first order. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.